You Suck at Defending. Yes, that's the title I chose for this video because honestly, I've done so many videos on defense, on garrisons, on building more garrisons, on the importance of garrisons, and I just don't know what to do at this point. So I'm sorry if I offend anyone, but you suck at defending. Maybe not you specifically, but a lot of Hell and Loose players do. And that is why teams get steamrolled. That is why teams get demolished in just a couple of minutes or why squads are completely unable to defend a position when they there's enough people, there should be enough people to be able to do so. So what we're gonna do, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna show you precise examples from matches that I had last night. I'm gonna show you how not to defend and how to actually defend a point, the proper way and the bad way. So let's start with the bad way. Let's see right here on Utah Beach, we have Fox and Delta Squad trying to defend Sunken Bridge. I, I say trying because they failed at it. Why did they, they fail at it? I'll just pause for a second. Think, guys, what is wrong with this picture? What's wrong here is Fox and Delta Squad aren't defending Sunken Bridge. Sunken Bridge can be capped from these four squares. Maybe some people don't know this, but there's two modes in the game, Warfare and Offensive. In Offensive mode, that's the mode like Omaha Beach, where you have to attack a defending team. That's the Germans. They control the entire map at the beginning of the game. In those objectives, you can only cap from the strong point. So the, the, the black circle right there. In Warfare, you cap from the sectors, the four squares that surround the points right there so fox and delta are only defending this area and that leaves them open to enemy attacks i'm sorry to enemy attacks from here from here from here anywhere why because they have absolutely no presence around this area here now the enemy is going to build a garrison or ops or whatever around this area or maybe around here anywhere that's going to let them launch an attack. And we failed to capitalize on a pretty solid attack on Chapel. As you can see, we had a, a, an attack garrison here. We had a, a my, my squad had an OP and we were doing this. The enemy, by the way, had garrisons here, here, and somewhere, I think around here or, or yeah, I think that's, that's where they did have a garrison. So they were poised to be able to repel our attack from multiple positions, from multiple locations. What I want to show you is there is no defending a point from within the strong point outwards. You cannot do this because once, those ga once the enemy is around you, the enemy will shoot you before you are able to spawn at the garrisons and run to your defensive position. You need to cover this distance because if you did have a garrison right there on the on the strong point, that garrison is going to get uh, blocked. It's going to come in, uh, you know, the enemy is going to get close. It's going to get disabled or it's going to get destroyed. And once that happens, sunken bridge or whatever point it is you're defending is going to fall. And especially with satchel charges being introduced to the game, you can put a satchel charge. Let's go to Sam Marie here. You can put a satchel charge on the church and blow everything up. If there's OPs here, if there's garrison, if there's notes, if there's anything, everything that's inside the church, every single guy defending the church from inside of it will die from a satchel on the wall of the church from the outside. So you cannot defend from within outwards. You cannot do this, guys. This is the wrong way of defending and it is why teams fail what we did on Saint Marie, where we had a proper defense setup is first of all we built a ton of garrisons we built one two three four five six garrisons to defend Saint Marie. why because i'm paranoid no because that's what wins games that's how you win a game Let, take a look at this picture the enemy had managed to push all the way from here into Saint Marie, 
and they took out four garrisons. We were left with only two garrisons to fall back and defend on. Now, how did we know that the enemy was attacking from there? Look at this picture. That garrison on, on church is lit up. None of the other ones are lit up. So the enemy isn't coming from here. They're not coming from here. They're not coming from here or here or here. They are coming from the east side. That's how you know that. Now, if we had a garrison there, if we had a garrison on, the, on our east side, like around here, we would have been able to see that garrison go red, maybe get destroyed and, you know, 100% know that that's where the enemy is coming from. Because they were coming from, they were actually coming from the cemetery. They, they were coming like, like this. So, as you can see, with a network of garrisons, which, by the way, some are in the point, some are outside the point. Look at this garrison right here. This is perhaps the most important garrison. That garrison is outside the sector. So if Samuri were to fall, we would at least be able to spawn here and go back. If that garrison's not there, we lose everything once we lose Samuri. Another point is, since the sector, the capping sector, this is the cap sector for Samuri, we have garrisons that are inside the sector. So once you spawn, you are already starting to cap and some that are outside. The reason we have this is basically necessity. You know, the, the garrisons have to be at a certain radius, but also that helps you come in from different angles. So if the team, if the enemy team were to manage to control the church, we can come from different angles into the church and try and take it back. Look at what's going on in Sunken Bridge. The enemy can control this area all around here. And you have no way they, they can even have maybe maybe they set up a garrison here and they're attacking. OK, well, that didn't work. Maybe they set up a garrison here and that's where they are, atta are attacking from. But you don't know that because you don't have enough garrisons. So what you need to do is patrol the area, patrol the area with your squad and start building garrisons. And if one garrison gets taken down, you go back to it and put it back. Not necessarily in the same position because that's, you know, just going to give the enemy, uh, the enemy is going to be able to find that garrison real, really fast. Um, but you want to set up the garrisons that are that were taken down. You want to keep those garrisons alive. Some people get paranoid when they start seeing their garrisons get taken down and start thinking, like, how does the enemy know that we put a garrison there? Even even I do this. Yesterday on stream, I was like, dude, am I getting stream sniped? Like, what's going on? Because our garrisons are getting destroyed super fast. Well, take a look at this. There's a garrison in Samurai. If the gar if the enemy team finds this garrison. The other garrisons have to be within a 200 meter radius so they can mark this position and they can check like this perimeter right here and they can find all the garrisons. That's probably that's like 90 percent, 99 percent sure that you're going to find garrisons 200 meters away from another one. Now, so that makes garrisons pretty easy to predict this garrison right here by the way everyone does this everyone does this garrison everyone does this garrison as well everyone or maybe everyone does a garrison on on cemetery why because they are good defensive positions they are easy to defend and it's suitable to build a garrison on those positions now what you need to understand here is on on sunken bridge on utah we lost this point be it, despite having two full squads dedicated to defense and we were unable to cap chapel because they were doing what we did on Samari. They had a garrison here. They had a garrison here. They had a garrison here. Now on sunken bridge, our only defensive position is from the north downwards. That's pretty much all we could do with these two garrisons. Later on, we managed to retake Sunken Bridge and we had garrisons around here and here, which, by the way, this might seem like it's completely open area. It isn't. There's 
a lot of dense vegetation here. There's plenty of places to, to hide garrisons, you know, and be able to detect the enemy and not having them taken down by, by an AT, AT soldier with a rocket from 200 meters away. You can hide garrisons effectively pretty much anywhere. Now, in summary, going back to summary for just a second, we were pushing the enemy this way. My squad was getting attacked while defending summary consistently from this direction, so we started pushing back. And we managed to take control of this area right here. Oh, wrong color. This area right here. We managed to push into this area because we had the confidence that we could fall back to these garrisons. Now you might say, Mono, you're so far away from the point, you're not defending Samri, or even worse, Mono, why are you doing defending Samri instead of Masandu Creek? And the reason is, guys, is because the enemy team, when we had this situation going on, we weren't in control of this area. The enemy was right here. The enemy was using this position and attacking Samari uh, from the north, right? From Cemetery. They were coming in this way. And they also had a squad that was harassing Church and trying to get rid of the garrisons on Church and the fallback garrisons around it. Why? So once they would cap Samari, once they capped Mason, Samari would fall really, really fast. So what we did was we went forward, we attacked, and we managed to repel the enemy, destroy their garrisons. We found two garrisons uh, and we drove them back to their front line. And this is a problem with the front line right now with the, with the way the map looks. Uh, and some people are, are advocating for it to, to change more dynamically, you know, maybe have it like be able to, to have regions like this go red if the enemy is, is in that area. But the main point I also want to touch on is the fact that you need to push back and find where the enemy is spawning from and take whatever it is, it's, if it's an OP, if it's a garrison, you need to take that down. If you do not find where the enemy is spawning from, their attack will not stop. And that is a paramount, a decisive factor in a successful defense. It is pushing back towards the enemy finding where it is that they're launching their attack from and destroy that. That's going to defend the position more than anything else. There is no way to attack a point without being able to spawn next to it. So what? that's why we pushed from San Marie towards the east side. Because no matter what, no matter how many garrisons we built or rebuilt, how much we patrolled the area or whatever, the attacks would just keep coming. They would just keep coming from these two directions. So attacking is actually a part of defending. You need to push away from the point and secure the area. You need to do this. You need to be in control of the area. You need to spread out to those garrisons that are lighting up in red or Alpus or whatever and go and take control of that position again. And you need to find those outposts, those garrisons that the enemy is using to attack you from and destroy them because if you don't destroy them it, it is just a matter of time until you are overwhelmed and once that happens the point is gone like caps go really fast so if you do not set up if you do not defend properly if you don't patrol the area if you just stay on the strong point if you just do that you are gonna fail all right so that's it guys hopefully this video is seen by a lot of people because i think really a lot of people need to see this. I see this constantly in Hell Loose matches, squad leaders not knowing how to defend. And you tell them, hey man, can you build more garrisons around the defensive point? And it's like they get annoyed. Hey dude, can't you see there's already two garrisons on the point? Yeah, two garrisons is not enough. You need at least four. You need four, five, whatever it is. More garrisons, the better. And if you're gonna build, you know, just two or three of them, they better be really, really good and you better take really good care of them. If you don't do that, if you don't build garrisons, if you don't defend from the outwards, inwards, if you don't patrol the area, the, the sector in its whole, go and attack the enemy, see where they are coming from. If you don't do those things, you are going to lose. 
All right, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, give it a like. Maybe share it with other players that you know of. And obviously hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And as always, thank you for watching and I hope I will catch you in the next one.